never eat food on the show? Well, it's because I have celiac disease, a wheat and gluten sensitivity that can lead to everything from infertility to cancer. Here to tell us more about it is the author of The Celiac Disease, A Hidden Epidemic, and my doctor, Peter Green. Welcome, doctor. Good day, Elizabeth. Now, Dr. Green's been treating me. He usually doesn't see me dressed. I'm usually in a robe getting some sort of test there. Which do you That's prefer? <laughs> She looks great. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Um, why don't I talk about celiac disease? Can you explain to everybody, because you'll do an excellent job of that, sure. what it is and what it does to your yeah. body? Yeah, so celiac disease is an autoimmune disease in which people are sensitive to gluten, which is the protein in certain grains. And what it does is cause inflammation in the intestine that causes atrophy of villi. Mm -hmm. Can I have a look at the... Yes, the diagram, okay. we have it there. So here, this is what your normal intestine looks like. That's my intestine, no. <laughs> well, you're halfway. You're going back in that direction. Yes, I am. So normal villi are these long finger-like projections that increase the surface area of your intestine and allow you to absorb all the nutrients. What happens when you get celiac disease? It goes flat. You lose all those villi, and then you withdraw gluten from the diet, and it goes back towards normal. Right, so I'm probably in the process of healing that. And when you have celiac disease, this can actually, if untreated, can lead to things like intestinal cancer, infertility, I've heard miscarriage, depression. That's True. right. The manifestations of it are very great, and remaining untreated leads to all those complications. Yeah, it's scary if you don't know that you have it. Elizabeth says she's, now I, I don't know if I have it, I know I'm gluten intolerant, but Elizabeth says she's healing that, does that mean she will heal it and be better or is this for the rest of her life she has to be gluten free? You have to be gluten free your entire life, it's a lifelong diagnosis, if you get diagnosed in childhood or an adult it's for the rest of your life. Right, it is. Because as soon as you start getting gluten, you go back in that direction, yes. flattening the villi. Yeah, and I felt that a few times. Um, what, do we know the cause of this specifically, Doc? We don't know precisely, but we know a lot. We know it's an interaction of your genes, gluten, and environmental factors. None of us digest gluten very well. Mm -hmm. We didn't evolve to eat wheat, actually. Right, right. And uh, there are these toxic fragments that get into the bowel wall probably during infections. And if your genetic makeup is such, you get this villus atrophy. That's the thing what happened to me. It's in my genes. I went away, I was out of the country. I had a bac bacterial intestinal infection. Haven't been the same since. What about my daughter, Grace, who's two? Do I have her tested? Well, you probably should do the gene test on her because okay. if she doesn't have the genes, you don't have to worry about what it. Is, what is the gene test? My mother has celiac, so okay. that's well, why if, Okay, if there's celiac disease in your family, mm -hmm. Each individual has about a 10% chance of having it. Okay. Some families have a lot and other families have none. But we know now we can do a gene test on the people who are family members and see if people are at risk. If you have the gene, it just means you're at risk. But if you don't have it, and it can exclude And that's testing it. for an antibody. No, yeah. that's the gene, the gene test. test. The gene test. That the just says if you're susceptible. The antibody tests, if you're eating gluten... Say your body's reacting to something, yeah, right? Yeah, that so, shows that you have it at the time. Yeah. Because what you the, can get it any time in your life. What about symptoms? What symptoms are people probably having and not realizing they have celiac? Well, the symptoms are very diverse, and that's one of the reasons that doctors don't make the diagnosis very often. Right. They're very common. They can vary from symptoms that get labeled as irritable bowel syndrome, mm -hmm. gas, bloating, diarrhea, yeah. fatigue. It's very attractive when you have yeah, it. I, I might have. <laughs> Well, well you'd probably be attractive way. whatever you had. Oh, so. I'm not <laughs> so great. So, uh, no. It's very diverse. Yes. Depression, neurological problems. Skin problems. Yes. There's a very itchy rash mm -hmm. that you eat gluten and you want to scratch this damn rash. Yes. What yes. is that called? Hyper, it's, uh, Dermatitis hepatiformis. Right. Yes. DH. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, I think the problem too is that because there's no medical company behind it, you know, a lot of the times doctors want to try to help you feel better, so they, That's right. they give you a medication yeah. that treats IBS. That's right. um, it also has to do with awareness, though, Elizabeth, because because there's no drug to yes. cure it, yes. the drug That's companies it. are not behind, not it, behind it, like raising yeah. awareness of no, the this disease because they can't industry. make any money off if it. You, That's right. If you are having symptoms, um, we have Alice Bass, the executive director of the National Foundation for Celiac Awareness here. Um, Alice, if someone's having symptoms, where should they go? They should go to celiaccentral.org print out the symptom checklist and demand that their doctor okay. test them for celiac disease. Okay. Because there's almost three million people suffering needlessly. And undiagnosed so far. Undiagnosed. 
Right. And um, a change in diet can change your life. That's right. Well, speaking of, we actually have some examples here of the food that we should be avoiding and food that we can have. Um, Dr. Green, there are some foods that people don't realize. Obviously, it's the wheat, barley, and rye that we shouldn't be having, right? That's right. And then, but there, I didn't realize it. I found out the hard way. It's in soy sauce. It's in barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. It's in flavored coffee. No more vanilla Licorice. lattes. Licorice. I you thought can, I was allergic to the movies. Gluten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can get gluten-free licorice. That's right. They, well, if you have celiac disease, you've got to realize that they're out to trick you. Yes. Because they put that wheat flour in just about anything. They do, and it's not oh, corn, what's obvious. Cornbread. Cornbread. Corn sounds innocent. It's bread not. Bread mold, right? That's yes. right. Yes. And yeah. Rice Krispies, they sound safe, but you've got to find a gluten-free brand. But, yeah, so there are great options. Because they have malt from barley. Yes, they have malt from yeah. barley. I found that out as the hard way beer. also. As a beer. But there's no, like, beer. there are so many foods that people can have, which is great. Starting with breads, you feel like you're going to never have bread again. They have great options. You pop them in the microwave. They almost taste like the real thing. Waffles, everything from your comfort foods, a pizza, um, think thin bars I always go to for protein. Mm -hmm. What are those, a cookies? Mm -hmm. Pamela's cookies are in the box. They're incredible because I don't want to cook. Um, they have pirate's booty and all the food here. That is, they have yeah. excellent Restaurants sources. Restaurants are very difficult, though. Restaurants Elizabeth are and I were discussing this before. Nobody believes you. They think you're lying yeah. when right. you go to a restaurant. They're like, well, it just has a dusting of flour. You can't even no. have the no. little bit. It's not bit. like that in the rest of the world. America, it, the United States, is very far behind many countries in Europe, Australia, really? where I come from. Gluten-free foods are widely you're available. You're Australian. I thought you were from Brooklyn. No, he's from Brooklyn. Ah! <laughs> hear that? You just love to taste like Didn't a Kit Kat. Mistake, eh? <laughs> no, these are actually made and they're supposed to taste like Kit Kat, so I need to give you the test, Susie, mm. because you're well, on it. Who makes those ones? These are actually um, Glutino. They're sugar-free wafers that are mm. chocolate covered, and I love what them. What about so the brownies? Then? The brownies are outstanding. Actually, once you find out you have celiac disease, you're probably going to get really fat because they have such incredible food. Well, so I think it's... That is something that people have to watch. Sometimes because people are then absorbing their food that they never absorbed. And yes. if you eat the same amount of food, you can gain weight, your cholesterol can go up. So, yes. you know, it is actually a healthy diet. It's a healthy diet, and it's also great if you have an incredible doctor to help you along the way. You've been <laughs> wonderful, Dr. Reed. Thank you so much. Um, if you guys want more information about celiac disease or any of these products, check out our website. We will be right back.